today we are looking at a case from the very end of the 19th century. So sit back as we go to the USA. Harry T. Hayward was born on the 24th of August, 1865, in McAlpin County in Illinois. He was the third of four children, born to William and Ladusky Hayward. Sadly, his sister named William Etta died in 1870, aged just two. When Harry was still an infant, the family moved to Minneapolis, where Harry went to school. He was, however, in many ways a very poor student. He was described as visionary and highly imaginative, but he was known to be a bully who was brutal in his instincts and enjoyed the sufferings of others. It was also said that he was devoid of any moral sensibilities, and it was also claimed that he had been known to harm domestic animals. When he finished his education, he obtained work as a clerk, but the pay could not provide him with the lifestyle that he desired. He liked to dress in elegant suits and portray himself as an important and well-to-do young gentleman. So in order to try and keep up this pretense, he started to gamble. In January 1894, Harry met a lady named Catherine Jing, who everyone knew as Kitty. She rented a flat in the building that was owned by Harry's father, Mr. William Ritt Hayward. The building was on Henny Pin Avenue and 13th Street and called Ozark Flats. Kitty was a few months older than Harry. She had been born on the 17th of October 1864 on a farm near Auburn in New York. Her parents named John and Bridget had emigrated some years earlier from Ireland and established a very good reputation in the local village community. They worked hard and made sure that their children were polite and respectable. Kitty, however, grew into quite an ambitious young lady and had become quite an expert at sewing and needlework. When she finished school, she obtained a position as an apprentice dressmaker for a lady named Florence Uncles. In 1884, Miss Uncles decided to open a shop in Minneapolis. She asked Kitty if she would join her so she could help her run it. The shop was in a good location on Nicolette Avenue and Kitty happily accepted. But only two years later, Miss Uncles unexpectedly died, leaving her business to Kitty. Although still a young lady at just 19 years old, Kitty proved to be a very successful businesswoman. She attracted wealthy clients to her shop, and as her reputation grew, her business became more prosperous. Eventually, her success enabled her to be able to live amongst the city's more prominent residents, and she moved to a rented apartment in the Ozark Flats building in downtown Minneapolis. In January 1894, Mr. Harry Hayward met Miss Kitty Jing. Kitty was instantly attracted to him. He always looked the elegant gentleman, and she was aware that he came from an affluent family. She believed that being seen in the company of someone who mixed in such high society circles would only help her to increase her own social standing and could lead to more wealthy customers visiting her dress shop. At first, they were only occasionally seen out together. It was known that Kitty had other boyfriends, and it was rumoured that she had previously been engaged. She kept an engagement ring in a small bag that never seemed to leave her side, but Kitty soon began to get rather infatuated with the sophisticated and charming Mr. Harry T. Hayward. Eventually she told him that she thought she may be falling in love with him. Harry did nothing to discourage this, but he had very different ideas as to the significance of their relationship. By now, he had become quite a regular at the card tables, and although he occasionally won, he certainly lost on far more occasions. He not only lost money, he also lost land. His addiction to gambling eventually meant that he lost virtually all the money he had, but Harry did involve himself in some quite devious ventures. He would pass on counterfeit bills and sell stolen jewelry, and of course, his charming manner was usually able to persuade people to lend him money. When someone tired of supplying Harry with money and asked for it back, he would promise to share the proceeds of his next big deal or provide them with some of his counterfeit notes. Kitty seemed to be drawn to Harry's high society, high risk lifestyle, something that was very alien to her, having been raised on a farm in a small close knit community near Auburn. On the 3rd of December, 1894, Kitty hired a horse and buggy from a local livery stable. She asked that it be sent to the West Hotel, where she would collect it at around seven o'clock that evening. She would occasionally hire horses and buggies and was known to be an accomplished driver. The gentleman who dropped off the horse and buggy was curious to know where she was going, but Kitty did not say. 
It was a Sunday. It was cold and dark. So it was somewhat unusual for a young lady to go out unaccompanied in this manner and at that hour. Meanwhile, Harry had been out with his friend named Thomas Waterman before he passed the rest of the evening at the Grand Opera House in the company of a young lady named Miss Mabel Bartleson. Just after 9pm, the horse and buggy wandered into the stable, but Kitty was nowhere to be seen. As night fell, a labourer who had been returning home, not far from Lake Calhoun, saw a young lady lying beside the roads. It was quite a remote area, and as he looked closer, he could see that she was dead. She looked like she had been in an accident and was lying in a pool of blood. The man hurriedly ran off to inform the police. When the police arrived, they thought that the young lady had fallen and it looked as if the horse must have inadvertently trodden on her head. They inspected the scene before taking the body to the mortuary. Eventually, they were able to identify the deceased as Miss Kitty Jing. However, they were shocked when the pathologist advised them that the young lady had been shot and the bullet was lodged behind her left ear. An investigation began. The police first went to the home of Miss Kitty Jing. They wanted to try and gather as much information as they could and one of the people they spoke to was Mr. Harry T. Haywood, who informed them of the reason why someone may have killed the young lady. He said that at lunchtime on the 3rd of December, he had met Kitty in a restaurant as she needed to borrow money from him, which of course he gave her. He had done this in the presence of the staff and other diners. Harry was sure that someone would have known that Miss Jing would have had a large amount of money on her person and that the motive for the killing would be robbery. The police knew of Harry's reputation and tried their best to get as much information out of him as they could. They wanted to know about his relationship with the deceased and why he would be lending her money. Harry informed them that he had been a friend of the young lady and nothing more. He also insisted that he knew of no one who would have wanted to kill her and said that all he knew about the murder was what he had read in the newspaper and from what he had heard in the street when people were discussing it. One of the first people that the police suspected may have been responsible for this most horrible of crimes was a man named Mr. Frederick Reed. He and Kitty had previously been involved in a relationship and they had even been engaged. The police questioned him for some time, but after confirming his alibi, they were satisfied that he was not responsible. Another person of interest was named Miss Lillian Allen. Like Kitty, Miss Allen had also previously been involved in a relationship with Mr. Reed. There were, however, many witnesses who could confirm her whereabouts on the 3rd of December. The police also spoke to another suspect, a travelling salesman named Mr. Harvey Axford. He was married, but for quite a while had also visited Kitty. Maybe he wanted her out of the way, as she may have threatened to tell his wife about their relationship. However, after interviewing Mr. Axford and looking into his alibi, he too was dismissed from their inquiries. Whilst the police had been investigating these suspects, Harry had been speaking to anyone who would listen about the case. He offered advice to both the police department and the mayor's office. As usual, he seemed to be full of his own self-importance, and it was as if he had forgotten that an innocent young lady, to whom he had been acquainted, had been so brutally murdered just a few days earlier. However, the case took a turn when a gentleman named Mr. Levi Stewart contacted the Hennepin County Attorney's Office. He was the Hayward family's attorney and told a very interesting tale. He said that on the 30th of November, Mr. Adry Hayward had visited his place of work and informed him that his brother Harry had asked him to kill Miss Jing. He added that apparently Harry had talked her into taking out a $10,000 life insurance policy with Harry as a beneficiary. Adry had refused to do it, but he was very worried as he was not a confident character and Harry would often persuade him to do things against his better judgments. Mr. Stewart went on to say that he listened to Adry, but did not really think anything more about it. However, after reading about the murder of the young lady in the newspapers, he came to report the conversation. The police decided to again question both Harry and Adry. Although Harry had an alibi, it was conceivable that he could have instigated the murder. Harry continued to deny that he had had any involvement in Kitty's death. However, after some quite intense questioning, Adry started to tell the police a very different story. He said that Harry had devised a plan to get Miss Jing to take out an insurance policy on her life, and then he plotted to kill her. He claimed that Harry had asked him to carry out the murder, but he refused. So instead, Harry turned to the caretaker of the Ozark Flats, a man named Klaus Blixt. 
Mr. Blix had come to Minneapolis from Sweden six years earlier and before taking up his current position, had worked as a bartender and a railway conductor. Most people considered him to be a particularly unfriendly character. With this new information, the police arrested Klaus Blixt. They then asked him about the events of the 3rd of December and without any intense questioning, he told them that he had indeed shot Miss Jing. However, even though he pulled the trigger, he did not believe that he had actually been responsible for her death. He said that he did it because Mr. Harry Haywood had somehow hypnotized or magically influenced him. Whilst this may have sounded like a very far-fetched tale, the police had previously been told that Harry had a way of getting people to do things that they may not have ordinarily done. They had also wondered why Kitty had hired a horse and buggy and gone alone to such a remote area on a cold December evening. Maybe Harry did have some sort of control over her, as it seemed that she would have done anything that he requested. Harry's brother Adri and the caretaker, Klaus Blixt, soon filled in all the gaps, and the police were confident that they had established not only the reason why the young lady was killed, but who had killed her and who had instigated the murder. From the statements obtained from Adri Hayward and Klaus Blixt, they surmised that Harry Hayward had loaned Kitty some money but insisted that she took out a life insurance policy with him as a beneficiary just in case anything happened to her before she paid back the loan. When his brother Adri told him that he would not shoot Miss Jing, Harry asked Klaus Blixt, promising to pay him $2,000. Then on the 3rd of December, Harry told Kitty that he was going to do a deal for some counterfeit currency and would need her help. He asked her to meet him in a remote location out of the city, but instead, he had given Mr. Blixt a gun and instructions to do away with her. Meanwhile, Harry made sure that he was seen out by many different people, so if the police ever suspected that he had killed Miss Jing, he would have a cast iron alibi. Following this, Adri was released, but Harry Haywood and Klaus Blixt were charged with murder. The newspapers had dedicated many columns to the murder and the investigation, and as the trial approached, they again made the killing of Miss Kitty Jing their main story, in the knowledge that their readers would want to know all the gruesome details of the case. The public seemed to be very intrigued by the whole event. Crowds had gathered around the jail when the two men were first arrested, and people had also gone to Ozark Flats, where they would just stare at the building and often strike up a conversation with other curious onlookers. The two men were to be tried separately, and although the court had scheduled that the trial of Mr. Klaus Blix would take place first, prosecutors insisted that this was changed, as if Mr. Blix was found not guilty, it would make it difficult for them to be able to successfully prosecute Mr. Hayward. Mr. Harry T. Hayward's trial for first degree murder opened on the 21st of January 1895, before Judge Seagrave Smith. Harry's father, Mr. William Ritt Hayward, made sure to employ the best attorneys available to defend his youngest son. These included William Irwin, known as the Tall Pine Tree of the Northwest, and John Day Smith, a Baptist deacon and state senator. The prosecution's main witnesses were Klaus Blixt and Harry's brother Adri Hayward. Mr Blix again said that he had in some way been hypnotised by the defendants and without thinking carried out his murderous act. When Adri took the witness stand, he told the court that he too had been under his brother's influence, as had Miss Kitty Jing, who he claimed that Harry appeared to have absolute control over, and that she seemed to always do anything Harry asked of her. The defence unsuccessfully tried to have Adri Hayward's testimony ruled as inadmissible, calling him insane. This was overruled by the judge, who said, well, I don't see that he is any more insane at the present time than the attorney is. Harry was not going to miss his moment in the spotlight and took the stand in his own defence. Of course, he denied all the allegations that had been made against him. The defence had argued that the fact that Harry lost money gambling was not relevant in the case, as many people lost money gambling and they did not go on to instigate a murder. They also considered the life insurance as irrelevant, as Miss Jing was an intelligent young lady and it was her decision whether or not she thought it necessary to take out a life insurance policy. The defence also reiterated that Mr. Klaus Blix had confessed that he had shot Miss Jing and that it was not possible for Mr. Harry Hayward to have influenced or hypnotised him into committing the crime. 
The trial lasted for a total of 46 days, and in total, 136 witnesses were called. But despite this, when the jury was sent out to deliberate, at 11.30 a.m. on Friday the 8th of March, 1895, they took less than three hours to return to find the defendant, Mr. Harry T. Hayward, guilty of first-degree murder. The judge then sentenced him to death by hanging. Harry's attorneys appealed the verdict, but they were unsuccessful. While in prison, Harry continued to deny that he had had any involvement in the murder of Miss Kitty Jing. He insisted that the state was sending an innocent man to the gallows. There was also an appeal by Harry's elderly parents and a letter from his chief defence counsel stating that Harry Hayward was insane. However, the governor refused to commute the sentence. He said that though Harry might well be insane now, he was not when he plotted the murder. As his execution date got closer, the newspapers continued to report on the case and Harry seemed to revel in all the attention he was getting. His brother visited him in prison and it was written that they had made their peace with each other on the evening of the 10th of December 1895, one day before Harry was due to be hanged, he confessed to his crimes in an interview with his cousin, Mr. Edward H. Godsell, and a court stenographer. He told of his illegal activities, which included murder. He claimed to have killed a young 20-year-old woman named Carrie Hass, who he had met when travelling in Pasadena, California. He said that he shot her before burying her body in a wooded area and claimed that he also stole the $7,000 that she had been carrying on her person. He also confessed to two other murders, as well as finally admitting that he had plotted the murder of Miss Kitty Jing in order to obtain the $10,000 life insurance payout. On Wednesday the 11th of December 1895, Harry T. Hayward was hanged at the Hennepin County Jail. He was later interred at the Hayward family plot at the Minneapolis Pioneers and Soldiers Memorial Cemetery. We will never know for sure if Harry Hayward was just responsible for the death of Miss Kitty Jing, or at least the three other victims he talked about the night before his execution. Klaus Blix was found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in prison without parole. He died in prison in 1925 at the age of 72. Hello everyone. And thank you so much for listening. As usual, please leave any comments or feedback you may have. And I hope to see you all again in the next brief case.